morning, everyone. I guess um, we should probably go ahead and get started. I hope it's all right with you. I'd like to sit since I'm referring to a lot of notes here. I hope everybody can hear me okay. Um, thank you for coming to this session. My name is Joe Williams, and I'm the interim associate university librarian for collections and services at UNC Chapel Hill. And um, very happy to be here this morning for the chance to speak um, with all of you and also just to be in Albuquerque. Um, I, I moved to North Carolina in 1987, but I was actually born and raised here, so um, it's nice to come home. I'm wearing my bolo tie to sort of represent, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's almost Carolina blue, but not, not quite. So um, can everyone hear me okay? Yeah. All right, super. Well, um, well, let's see. This session um, today grew out of um, discussions that I had with colleagues uh, recently, and I think even discussions looking at the um, CNI program plan, where we were talking about um, how do we influence pedagogical change. And um, so we were asking ourselves, you know, how do we in <laughs> influence pedagogical, pedagogical change on our campus? How do we help introduce and demonstrate and advocate um, for the use of new tools and new technologies and spaces in instruction and in the curriculum. Um, we started listing familiar approaches. Uh, you know, we worked directly with, uh oh, sorry, worked directly with instructors. Of course, we do one off sessions and um, help design assignments, do course integrated instruction, um, consultations. We visit departmental meetings, sit in curriculum committee meetings if we're lucky. Um, we also uh, partner with other support units on campus to co-teach courses, to build learning communities, um, to co-host events and programs. We provide and model the use of technology-enabled spaces for instructors by holding sessions in these spaces, and we demonstrate the possibilities. And then we started drifting a little bit you know we also spend a lot of time working directly with students on assignments through consultations during workshops and events that we provide or that we co-host and we have been training and relying on students lately to provide more and more digital scholarship support and those last two approaches I know they're not new practices for the libraries but um, we have started thinking about those two touch points as maybe two more places where we can help influence and affect pedagogy on campus. And that does feel like a new shift in focus for me. So um, students have certainly been taking on more and more substantial research support roles over time, um, you know, from providing general information to basic technology assistance and and basic research and reference and not just grad students providing this service but now also undergraduates and we're relying on students for instruction more and more and now we're relying on them for digital scholarship support and the 2014 CNI um, digital scholarship center survey showed that virtually all the respondents um, employed undergraduate and graduate students so um, we started talking about the value that we get from having well-trained students. It, obviously, it, it helps us balance the workload on our librarians. Um, <clears throat> but I think the, the, there's the potential for these uh, students to take their new skills and knowledge back into the classroom and into their coursework as students, and that could influence pedagogy from kind of from the ground up. And we do know anecdotally that they do, they do some of this. Um, they may become future instructors themselves, and indeed some, some of our past student employees have. So again, implications there on changing how we teach. Um, and they also gain good skills and work experiences to complement their degree. And um, to, to Allison Head's point in her plenary speech yesterday, um, we may be teaching them some, some valuable research and teaching skills that they can't get <coughs> anywhere else. So I'd like to share just some very quick examples from across three different libraries at UNC showing the kinds of digital scholarship support we provide, how we train students for these tasks, and the kinds of skills that they're developing. So first, um, 
The Arby House Undergraduate Library is UNC Library's uh, Center for Supporting Digital Media Creation. They offer a workshop series uh, called Skillful each year with multiple courses and iterations. They also provide support for UNC's new campus-wide Adobe partnership, which provides free access to the Adobe Creative Suite for all students and also for instructors. Um, the library's Adobe support includes a pilot of 10 classes in our English 105 program that feature multimodal assignments and digital literacy instruction. So our students teach skillful workshops on digital media creation that include classes on social media graphics, infographics, creating geo filters. Um, students develop content for these courses, including the lesson plans. Um, they may create playlists of existing instructional con uh, content or custom designed uh, templates. Our students also provide consultations. Um, and their workshops and their consultations cover both free and licensed software such as Giphy and WordPress as well as the Adobe projects we mentioned. And here are uh, two of our graduate students teaching a skillful session <laughs> showing their students how to make an animated GIF and getting them in the GIF. I can only watch those for a second I start to get a little seasick. So, um, the undergraduate library hires primarily library science students. Um, the staff encourages those students to identify their professional goals and then they work to pair the students' interests with the workshops that we provide or that we want to provide. Um, so let's see, in terms of, of training, uh, as you see here, uh, students go through some self-guided learning. Um, we do have a, a campus license for lynda.com and we rely on that heavily. We do have formal training sessions that the students go through. They um, serve as floaters in many of our training sessions to start to um, become more familiar with the material that eventually, uh, hopefully, they will be teaching. Um, they do peer coaching uh, from more experienced student employees. And we do continue our training throughout the year. Um, and they're also uh, working on projects, you know, under the mentorship of, of library staff, so getting further skills there. So here's a short list of, of some of the technical skills or the tools that they're trained on, and also a list of some of the softer skills um, through their work. Uh, you'll see, um, you know, there's public service, public speaking. Um, through their work, the students also begin to understand some of our professional standards or our best practices. They understand more about how students consume media, understand um, what students have the capacity to actually produce, the ability to teach technology to students with varying levels of experience. And they develop strong communication skills, uh, particularly visual and um, writing for the online environment. Um, so now I'd like to switch to a, another example. The library's research hub is our digital scholarship support program. And it's, uh, we have centers distributed across three different libraries on campus. So the next example comes from our research hub in UNC's Davis Library. So <clears throat> when uh, students have advanced skills in working with particular tools or software and they're interested in instruction, then uh, we ask them to lead instruction sessions. Uh, one student, for example, led a workshop on SketchUp 3D modeling. Uh, another co-taught with a librarian two classes last semester in social work that focused on web-based data, mapping resources that the library subscribes to, so policy map, social explorer. Uh, a third student who's actually an employee of another um, research hub on campus is teaching a, a Getting Started with Carolina Cloud Apps program at the end of this month. Um, Carolina Cloud Apps is the campus IT's new service and framework for deploying web, web applications in the cloud. Excuse me, when you say yes. students, are you talking about the library school students? 
students? So uh, in Davis Library, we have both graduates and undergraduates, and um, not all of our students do come from the library science school, and it, particularly in this in this program. Keep going. Can you speak on the presentation? I don't want to go in with you. Okay. Um, if you're going to address this, at, uh, how do you select students that have all these skills? Hmm. I don't. I don't get too deeply into that, but it certainly is part of our uh, part of our interviewing process and selection process, looking at what skill sets students bring, and we do have some established. Um, programs, courses that that we deliver, so we're specifically looking for some skill sets to be able to carry on that instruction, but we're also looking for um, new skills as well. So uh, there's a bullet down there about leading events, and um, the Research Hub has a, has a very active programming schedule, so our students will assist with organizing and promoting and, and running events. Um, one of our undergraduate students suggested holding a mapathon in the hub following Hurricane Matthew in Haiti. And after some guidance uh, from hub staff, he did all the preparation for the mapathon and led it. And we've had, I think, four more student led events such as that uh, since then. And then, in terms of consultations, um, our service desk is staffed 52 hours a week by students. They answer walk-in questions in a variety of topics, as you see some here. Um, a large percentage of our desk interactions here um, involve mapping and other visualizations. Students also um, provide assistance with GIS software and extending the interface with Python. Do web mapping and a variety of questions about finding and using data sets. And of course, the more difficult questions are referred to full-time staff who consult by appointment. Um, but these students do uh, take on some pretty um, complicated, I would say, questions. <laughs> so uh, the Davis Hub, as I, as I was just saying, does uh, the student employees generally do not come from our um, library science program. So for that reason, we focus our training to um, instill a, a service mentality. They attend a formal service training with other library staff at the beginning of the year. We also co-staff our space with the Odom Institute for Research and Social Science. So we provide shared service training with the Odom consultants twice a year as well. So other forms of training, um, again, our, our students um, float, and sorry, I lost my place here float and help uh, work on workshops, and then they field the follow-up questions and the consultations that might come out of those classes. Students attend and observe uh, project consultations with librarians. This is a fairly new step for us, um, but often those project-oriented consultations will have some kinds of deliverables um, and will probably require more than one consult. So. Um, the librarians will, will have the student attend the consult and then the student will work on the deliverable. Um, then they'll bring their work back to the librarian to kind of check um, and once they've got everything as they want it, then they'll, then they'll uh, take the deliverable back to the client for, for the next consultation. Um, students, let's see, we do hold some informal training uh, bi-weekly, they call it the hubbub. Um, training sessions, sometimes led by staff, sometimes by students, and they focus on specific concepts or tools. Um, and um, we also suggest specific training for students based on what they're interested in or, or what would benefit them based on their goals. Um, students are each assigned learning modules to work through when they're not working on specific projects or when there's downtime at the service desk. Uh, these learning modules may come from lynda.com, from the Esri Virtual Campus, and also from projects and exercises and guides that are created by our library staff. And we manage all of that work through Trello. So 
So our students become more comfortable working with a variety of different types of data. They learn the importance of understanding primary and secondary data. They learn to find and format and use uh, tabular and ge geospatial data. Um, they use related tools and software, primarily visualization, uh, GIS, and web mapping softwares. Um, they gain proficiency with open source data and software that's not widely used in their coursework and they learn at least the basics of Python. And the students learn to solve problems and be self-led learners by answering questions at the service desk and also by working through their self-led learning assignments. They learn leadership skills by taking ownership of programs and events and students also improve their public speaking skills by leading instruction sessions. And then my final example comes from our Keenan Science Library Research Hub and Makerspace, which brings together lots of specialized and uh, some of it expensive maker equipment for all of the campus to use. And they also provide consultative help and programming and instruction. So student workers at the Keenan Science Library have developed new workshops and they teach established ones, such as uh, a few listed here, the Internet of Things workshop that a student led with an industry partner from the Research Triangle Park um, near Chapel Hill, an employee of SAS. Um, another student uh, designed and led an Introduction to Making for Faculty workshop, and that was co-taught with our Center for Faculty Excellence staff. Um, and then we have some established courses that they teach as well, 3D scanning is uh, is an ongoing course with Next Engine as well as 3D Design and Tinkercad. And um, they also help field the consultations, again, that result from those classes. They help with course integrated instruction. One of our grad students served on the Campus Makerspace Networks committee that was planning the curriculum of workshops to support lab research skills. Uh, he also served on the design advisory committee for our, the Moorhead Planetarium's new makerspace. And they also participate in, in outreach events, um, you know, campus and local maker fairs, TEDx, UNC, um, UNC Science Expo, and so forth. Now in terms of training, we start students off immediately uh, by having them attend our workshops. And like the other programs I've described, these students um, also shadow and they co-teach first before they start teaching solo. They float during workshops to learn the material or the assignments. They're given training on software, <clears throat> how to run equipment, how to troubleshoot equipment. They're given self-directed learning assignments as well. One student is exploring Sphero right now. Uh, another is learning about the Internet of Things. Students do coach and help each other because um, these students also have different prior experience and expertise, some with teaching and graphic design, electronics, 3D imaging. And they also receive coaching, of course, from um, their peers and from working with the librarians and staff from other partner organizations. Some of our students occasionally attend uh, professional development as, as funds allow. Um, mostly local and regional events, but we also have had some uh, students go to national and international conferences. And they train us. Um, that maybe should be the first bullet there. We have students who come in with some very special skills and uh, have really helped us build out many of our programs. We have a grad student right now uh, with experience with 3D scanning, photogrammetry and another with um, lots of work experience uh, in 3D printing, who actually was uh, formerly working in the makerspace at NC State before he um, came and started library school with us. So <clears throat> as you can see here, again, I'm listing some of the more technical skills that the students in, in this particular program are learning. and. Uh, also some of the, the softer skills, the consultation, interview technique. Again, the Keenan Science Library does not hire students from library science program exclusively or even primarily. So focusing on that interview technique is especially important here. And so looking back at um, kind of the long list of 
training topics. I think there are a lot of very different project-specific technical skills being taught here, um, as you would expect. And maybe um, more interesting, at least to me, are, are some of the softer skills that we also train on. And here there's much more overlap across these three um, fairly different programs. Some of these are obvious skills, I think, for student employees and library service um, roles, like training on policy and workflow and on public service values. But others, I think, are more unique, like um, the instruction skills for promoting active learning, um, leadership skills, it's not written here uh, explicitly, but I'd say that we're, we're teaching student employees um, you know, how to communicate about research, how to communicate their own research, how to teach and consult with both peers and patrons, um, sometimes one and the same, uh, how to introduce new technologies and approaches to research and teaching, and um, all of this to a broad and diverse audience. So um, in addition to providing students with these valuable skills and experiences, it may be, uh, I think, that as students take these skills back into the classroom and incorporate them into their work, that the libraries may have identified another touch point here for helping influence pedagogic, pedagogical change that bears some more formal study and um, consideration. And it's really as far as, as we've gotten here. I'd be very interested to know if um, others here have been thinking about or approaching student training in this way or with these goals in mind. Um, I'd also love to hear what you think about any of this and or if you have experiences that you would like to share. I would find that very, very useful. But um, first, let me let me thank my co-authors, the people who contributed much of this content from these different programs and the folks who are designing and doing this work with our student employees. We will share these slides um, online too so you'll have access to all of this, but you are certainly welcome to contact any of us with specific questions. And um, in the meantime, I can try to answer some specific questions right now if you have any. And uh, chat, but thank you.